OK, so what I want to talk about is how to graph a quadratic by using a table. And this is going to be a very uh, basic look form here. But remember, when we have a table, all right? So when we have a graph, we have an x and a y axis. And the x and y axis, what they do is they represent all of our x and our y coordinates of a graph. So if I'm giving you an equation, um, especially a function, what we know is for every x coordinate, we're going to have exactly um, our one y coordinate. All right. So what we can do, and actually let's uh, rewrite this x and y. Doesn't really matter, but we'll just go through it. What I know is I can always produce a graph. All right by applying a table. And what I mean by this, for every x coordinate, I'm always going to have a y coordinate. So let's just kind of go through and graph a couple equations. So the first equation is let's graph the standard equation, which is y equals x squared. Now, if I wanted to graph this by using a table, what I'm simply going to do is I need to choose points that I want to represent. And this gets a little bit of confusing with students because they don't understand, oh, how, how do you know which, number, which uh, values to choose? Well. Remember a graph. A graph represents an infinite many of points as long as it's a continuous function. It represents an infinite many of points, meaning there's infinite numbers of points that you can pick to plug into for your x to be, therefore be able to get your y. So you can pick any number. You can pick negative 1, right? You can pick positive 10. You can pick 1,000. You can pick the square root of 3. You can pick any kind of number. And as long as it's a continuous function, you're going to have an output value. But as far as graphing, when we're graphing something, we want to use as many whole numbers as possible and also the simplest numbers that we can choose. So as graphing this, what I like to do is just kind of pick a couple positive and negative numbers that are going to be simple and small. So if I want to graph y equals x squared, let's, just, uh, let's not go crazy and let's just pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Now, when graphing a table, usually 0 is always a good one. And you always usually want to have a couple negative and a couple positive, depending on your graph, to kind of get an idea of how to graph with the table. So as I'm going to graph here, I have y equals x squared. What I'm going to do is I'm now going to input my negative x value to, or my x values to now determine what my y value will be. So the first one, I'll do y equals negative 2 squared. Well, negative 2 squared equals 4. So that's going to be one ordered pair, which I can write as an ordered pair of negative 2, comma 4, where x represents my ne or negative 2 represents my x coordinate, and 4 represents my y coordinate. Then I'll just continue on. Let's do for negative 1. So that's y equals negative 1 squared, which we know equals 1. That is also a coordinate, a coordinate point of negative 1, comma 1. We can do y equals 0. which we know is just going to equal 0. And then we can just continue on. We could say y equals 1 squared, which equals 1. And then y equals 2 squared, which equals 4. And what we notice is it doesn't really matter if it's a negative or a positive. We're still going to kind of get our output value. And that's going to kind of be the characteristic of a parabola. So now that I have these coordinate points, I'll put these coordinate points over here to save a little space. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to plot these coordinate points. So the first coordinate point will be at negative 2. So I go over negative 2 on my x-axis because negative 2 represents my x-coordinate. And then I'll go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then I'll do negative 1 over 1, 0, comma 0, over 1, up 1, and over 2, up 4. And now what we have is this is a continuous function. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to connect these points. And we'll notice this is going to be our graph by using a table. And there's a couple important things to notice about this graph using a table. One thing is we notice that we have this line of symmetry is going on our y-axis. And then to the left and to the right of the axis symmetry is exactly the same, which you notice that when I go to the left, and so the axis symmetry was at 0, right? So that when we go to the left and to the right, you can see the y-coordinates are exactly the same. And that's a characteristic of a um, graph. So I'll go through a couple more examples of high graph using the table, but for right now, that is your standard graph. Thanks.